Today on Timmy Tech TV, we take a look at my personal favorite cooler. It's the Dark Rock Pro 3. Stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, already got it out of the box. A few things to get out of the way real quick. My favorite looking CPU cooler on the market. It is a 250 watt TDP. It's got a 120 millimeter silent wing fan on the front with a 135 in the middle. It is dark brush nickel looking, but it has this gorgeous top plate on it. They even cover up the little ends of the heat pipes. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it installs. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, we need a processor in here. We have the Core i7, it's a 5820K, the low end Haswell, but we're going to use this test bench primarily for single card setups, which means I don't necessarily need the lanes. This will be more than good enough to not bottleneck. And of course, we have tape, which means no, 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 little kitty knife. I still haven't figured out a song for it. I refuse to watch Little Kitty to figure out if there is a Little Kitty song. So we could do like, my little kitty, my little kitty. I don't know. So this is going to be my first complaint about the cooler. I have installed the larger Noctuas, and I did not find them as cumbersome, I guess I'll say. The first thing you have to do is you have to put these little adapter screws on. So we're going to have to put one of those in each corner of the uh, 2011 board. Of course, i got to figure out which way they go in. It's the small end or the big end. Okay, so we got the four little corner screws in. They are the adapters that will go between uh, the 2011 and the normal uh, mounting mechanism. If you were using an i7 or an AM3 Plus or whatever, you would get, you use this back plate, but of course the 2011 already has the back plate. This is a really nice back plate, guys. I'm really impressed. It is 100% non, I mean, it's stiff as a board has anti-conductive plastic on it and really nice foam. So it's a really nice back plate. First of all, you get this horrid, horrid little mounting screw wrench thing. Um, you know, let me see if we can fix this. This isn't an episode of Jerry Rigged or anything. If you want those, obviously you have to go over to Barnacles' channel. But I think I can 100% improve this thing um, just by doing that. Be quiet. For the love of God, put an angle on these things. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, so much better. You can actually get it in there and tighten it now. So, you of course want to tighten all four of these. And, um, you know, like I said, just grab a pair of pliers and put an angle on that sucker because it'll come in handy later. We do, of course, need to put these on the bottom of the heatsink. We can do that off camera. We'll come back. I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll move on. Okay, a few changes. One is... You want to make sure to obviously put your RAM in. This is DDR4 from Corsair. So nice looking RAM to go with this nice looking board. I think it is very slick. This is of course the EVGA MATX X99 board. So got all those in, we want to test fit the cooler. I'm of course gonna go back to front just because that's how I think it looks better in this case. And I'm just gonna lightly test fit it down on and make sure that we have more than enough clearance and it looks good there. Now, unfortunately comes the part that I'm really gonna ding them on in this case, getting the nuts, which are 
right here, these little tiny nuts on underneath. I have big hands. I don't even know how I'm going to do the, the ones on this side. I, I just have no clue. Like a pair of needle nose pliers, maybe if I'm lucky, you know, there's no way they stay, you know, in this. So I, I really have to ding them on, you know, this is going on a test bed. I don't think I will probably ever take this off once I get it on. But if you're doing something where you're going to take a cooler on and off, you might want to look at something else. This is an awesome high TDP heat sink. It's going to do a great job. But getting this little nut on the top of those posts is going to be a nightmare. So I'm going to try a couple of things. I'm probably going to try flipping the whole thing upside down. We'll do that off camera because it's going to be a mess. I'll come back and let you know what worked the best. Okay, so as you can see, we are off the test bed and there's unfortunately a very good reason for that. I had to pull the ram out of the board to be able to get at these top two screws or the, the nuts. Now... I had to take all the RAM out, so the back and the front. Luckily, the back has, you know, there's no fan on the back, so it's easier to get it out. There's more clearance. But these front ones, even with the fan off, if I had RAM that was any taller than that, there is no way that it, I would have ever, ever been able to install this CPU cooler. So keep in mind, guys, if you're looking at this, if you have DDR4, so you have RAM on both sides, or... You just have really tight clearances on the motherboard you're trying to use. This may not be the cooler for you. It definitely was a challenge. I had to break out, you know, the needle nose pliers and a lot of swearing. At the end of the day, it was the hardest CPU cooler I've ever installed, unfortunately. Now, I really feel like Be Quiet could easily fix this. Hopefully in their future generations, they will. But... It is one gorgeous looking CPU cooler, and if you only have to go through that horror once, I feel like it's worth it. This will look awesome for years to come. Great fans, great cooling technology. It's gonna be whisper quiet, high TDP, so it's gonna be able to handle this chip just fine. And you'll see it as part of our upcoming test bench slash ridiculous media center build. So this is Tim for Timmy Tech TV. Stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.